I think the most important thing about this particular question is that you can tell, or you should be able to tell within seconds, do you know how to solve this question or don't you? The only real mistake people can make here is try to solve it when really they should have known immediately they don't know how to solve it. So that could be an important takeaway if you did spend two, three, four minutes trying to solve this question, not knowing how to solve it, that was a big mistake. You can't let that happen on the actual test. In order to actually solve this question, there's just two things that we need to know. Number one, the units digit of a product depends only on the units digits of all of the factors of that product. In other words, we can ignore tens digit, hundreds digit, thousands digit, etc. They don't impact the units digit, and I explain in my book why that is. The second thing we need to know is that there is a repeating pattern for units digits when we raise them to exponents. So I'm not looking at the bases as 33 and 43, I'm just looking at them as 3 and 3. Again, because the units digit is all that matters since the units digit is what they're asking about. Now what I need is a repeating pattern for 3 to the power of whatever. So 3 to the power of 1 is 3, 3 to the power of 2 is 9, 3 cubed is 27, so the 7 is the important part there. And 3 to the power of 4 is 81, so there the important part is the 1. So the unit's digit is going to be repeating like this. 3, 9, 7, 1, 3, 9, 7, 1, 3, 9, 7, 1, 3, 9, 7, 1. The pattern length is 4, so we can say that any time the exponent is a multiple of 4, the unit's digit will be 1. Now if the remainder of the exponent in the context of divisibility by 4, is 1, then the unit digit is 3. And if the remainder is 2, the unit digit is 9. And if the remainder is 3, then the unit digit is 7. Now looking at the exponents that we have here, 43 has a remainder of 3 in the context of divisibility by 4, and 33 has a remainder of 1 in the context of divisibility by 4. So looking at my pattern, again the remainder 3 points us to 7, and the remainder 1 points us to 3, adding them together, I get a unit's digit of 0. So I'm going to go ahead and pick answer choice A, and move on to the next question. If you found this video useful, go to quantreasoning.com for a lot more where that came from. You should also click that like button and let me know in the comments below what you'd like me to make future videos about. And of course, if you haven't yet subscribed, go ahead and do that and click that bell below so you get notified about future videos. See you next time.